A little bit scary there, huh? Could have got you all the way through the internet. Maybe that, you know, wasn't totally safe. Could have shot my camera and somehow that shot goes all the way through the internet. And gets you right through the screen. Who knows? Folks, Fatty the Farm here. I'm actually here with the Caltech KSG 12 gauge shotgun. This is a gorgeous shotgun. Kicks like a freaking mule. But it's an awesome shotgun to shoot. So stay tuned and we'll talk about this gun and be doing a bit of a review. Now that we're back from the shooting portion, first things first. This thing has a hell of a lot of recoil. I own several 12 gauges. I own a couple pump 12 gauges, a few break action 12 gauges, even a semi-automatic 12 gauge. This kicks far worse than any of those. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because the explosion's happening right here and there's less material. I, I don't know. All I do know is this has a lot of kick. It's not the worst, but it's definitely got a lot of kick and it makes it unpleasant to shoot. Also for me, this butt pad is very, very tough and it's uncomfortable against my shoulder. Uh, it's not an uncontrollable gun, but it is just uncomfortable for me. But that being said, it is a fun gun to shoot. God is this gun fun to shoot. I put mm, 200 shells-ish through this shotgun. I uh, really like the, this shotgun. I've only had a couple issues so far and both of them were failures to extract and weirdly enough it was federal. It was on federal ammo. I don't know why. Out of the you know, couple of hundred shells I've fired I've had two failures to extract which immediately led to a double feed. I don't know why. I, I can't you know tell you why. Uh, you know the extractor is fine. Uh, the rims of those shells were just fine. That it wasn't like it broke a piece off. For some reason, I, I, I guess maybe the guy was getting the gun dirty or my extractor springs weak. I don't know. But there were two instances where I did have phase to extract, which immediately caused a double feed because gonna pick a new one off and try to ram it in the chamber, which is blocked. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't give you a reason why that happened. I can just tell you it did. Uh, not bad, you know. Just took a ramrod, you know, you know, popped it out. No big deal. But let's get to some of the features. This is a shotgun. Uh, right up top, it has on the top of the gun a Picatinny rail. This is an all-metal Picatinny rail. It's got 30 position, you know, 30 position. So each little notch is a position. So one through 30, whatever. Uh, I sat my EOTech, well, uh, one of my EOTech 512s on top of this thing, and I like the 512 because it uses standard AA batteries, and you can get AA batteries at any mom and pop, you know, hole in the wall store at any Nowhereville, anywhere in the US. AA batteries, easy to get. But I've had, you know, I've had this EOTech on this KSG for all the shells I've fired through it, has maintained zero, no big deal. And th speaking of what I've fired through it, I fired uh, 15. Slugs, bunch of bird shot, bunch of butt shot, but you know, so far the EOTech's you know holding up just fine, so that's impressive. You know, this does have a bit of recoil, so it's kind of nice knowing the EOTech you know can take that kind of abuse. It should take that kind of abuse, but you know, it's just good to know this specific one will. And I fired this in cold weather, hot weather. It is Oklahoma, so we can get you know 30 degrees one day and 80 degrees the next. Oklahoma weather sucks, but I love it. You've got two uh, sling mounts up here, left and right. So whether you're right-handed like me or left-handed, you can have a sling mount. So also, I guess you can you know, bring it on the back. I don't know. This really doesn't work well with a single position, you know, single point sling. 
Here on the uh, pump, it does have a multi-position picatinny rail. So you could put, you know, vertical piston grip, angle piston grip. I was just using it straight like this. Yeah, you want to be careful that you don't slam your hand, you know, forward. So you're not gonna, boom, because that would suck and, you know, kind of blow your hand apart a little bit. And that wouldn't feel too good. But other than that, this gun has a solid construction. Uh, I've had, you know, no problems so far. Uh, I have seen in some videos, though, where people have had issue when, you know, when you, you know, pump the round out, that when the shells come down, they hit the wrist. I've really not had any of that issue, and I'll show you. Because whenever I hold the gun, you know, let's go back here, I don't tuck in, you know, I, I can see where you'd want to be real tight and compact, but I know to kick my arm out, just so whenever I jack that shell out, it's not gonna hit my wrist or elbow, or sorry, wrist or you know, arm somewhere in here. But for some people, I could see where you would wanna hold it differently. Yes, this is not comfortable holding you know, my arm all the way out to the side. This would be more comfortable bringing it in, but I didn't wanna you know, smack myself with shells, because quite frankly, the additional piece that you can get for this, either left hand or right, I don't know the name of the company, but it's a little plate. Uh, last time I looked into it, it was like $90. I'm like, are you shitting me? For a piece of bent metal that you screw into to the gun? That's a little ridiculous. $30? I'd pay $30 for it. $40? Eh. But $90? No, they, they can keep it for that price. For $90, I'll just, you know, kick my arm out. Now, if those prices ever do come down, I'm gonna get one for this. But currently, I'm not looking at getting one. Only other accessory I would want to add to this thing is a pistol grip or a stop. Just to keep, you know, a little more, you know, assurance that my hands are gonna run out the front and get blown off. Because I don't wanna do that. I, I, you know, I like having manual dexterity in both of my hands. I, I don't wanna, you know, limit my capabilities. Yeah, that's right, some people are gonna make, you know, jokes about that. You're, oh, you don't wanna limit. No, I just like, you know, be able to high five. Whatever. Uh, not really gonna show you how to disassemble this gun. There's enough videos out there to do it. Plus, it's a shotgun. Just squirt some oil up in here, you'll be fine. Uh, folks, this is a really nice gun. I like it. Uh, oh, one last thing, trigger pull. Kind of shit. You know, not bad. I felt a lot worse trigger pulls. But there is a bit of take up. The wall's pretty good, but it turns mushy real quick, and then you have the break. Now your reset is all the way back out, so, you know, it wouldn't be nice to have a little bit lighter or crisper trigger, but it's actually, it's, for what this is, it's not bad. I, I can't complain. I've felt far worse triggers on other guns. Uh, I've actually felt worse triggers on a Glock, but then again, a Glock's a Glock. Whatever. Yeah, there are worse triggers out there than this. But folks, I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it informative. If you get a chance to shoot one of these, freaking shoot it. Shoot the crap out of this thing. Uh, I had two issues. I don't really care. I'm going to keep shooting this thing. I'm going to keep having fun with this shotgun. Uh, if you ever get a chance to buy one and you want to own one of these, freaking buy it. It's your money. Do with your money as you please. So folks, this has been Fatty with the Farm. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos in the future on really cool guns.